Welcome to our final video about HBase, where we're going to be learning a little bit about Hive and Hive query language. So to start the video, we're going to demonstrate how we link tables from HBase to Hive so that we can write Hive query language queries. And then we're going to demonstrate writing a couple of HQL queries. So let's go ahead and get started. As we mentioned in a previous video, Facebook is a very big user of Hadoop. But one of the problems with Hadoop is anytime you interact with data stored in Hadoop, you have to do so using a MapReduce job. And writing jobs in MapReduce is quite a bit more complex than writing queries in SQL, for example. So in 2010, Facebook created Hive in order to simplify interactions with Hadoop and then donated Hive to the Apache project. So Hive converts SQL-like queries to MapReduce jobs. And we can use Hive in a lot of different ways to interact with data in Hadoop. However, for the purpose of this class, we are going to be exclusively using Hive just to read data from HBase. So in order to query HBase using Hive, we first have to link a table in Hive to our HBase table. So in order to do that, we're going to go into the Hive console and say create external table and then the name that we want to give this table within Hive. And then in parentheses, we're going to have a comma delimited list of all of the attributes and their data types as we want them presented in Hive. This is very much just like creating a table in a relational database. And then since we're linking this to HBase, we're going to say stored by org.apache.hadoop.hive.hbase.hbase storage handler. So this tells Hive that we are connecting to an HBase database with uh, properties of these column mappings where we're going to specify all of the column families and qualifiers that we want to connect to in HBase. And these have to be listed in the same order that we listed the attributes uh, when we're defining the table right here. So that's going to link up our HBase columns to the attributes in our Hive table. And then table name is going to be the table in HBase that we are connecting to. So let's first connect to this customers table that we had created in an earlier example. So we could say something like create external table customers and we're gonna bring in the row ID, name, phone, and address as well as the checking, savings, and business account values. And we're going to be mapping these attributes, the row ID to the row key in HBase, our name attribute to details name, our phone attribute to details phone, address to details address, checking to accounts checking, savings to accounts savings, and business to accounts business. And then we're connecting to the HBase table customers. And once we do this, we can run just normal looking SQL queries in Hive. So let's switch over to our HBase server and take a look at what this looks like. So I'm first just going to open up HBase shell. And we can see here we have uh, two of the tables that we've created in our previous examples and we have some data in these tables so i'm going to exit out of hbase and type hive to launch the hive client and we can execute the command show tables to see if we have any tables in Hive currently. And the answer is no, we don't have any tables yet because we haven't created any tables. And I will point out here that Hive is very picky about having a semicolon at the end of the line. Uh, a lot of our relational database management systems will let us get away with not having the uh, semicolon, but Hive will not execute anything until you put that semicolon. So. We currently don't have any tables, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this create table command from the PowerPoint presentation. And so now we've created this table in Hive. 
oh, sorry, show tables, not list tables. And you see we have a customer's tables now. So we can say select asterisk from customers. And it takes it just a moment to run. And you see we get uh, back in a format that is kind of reminiscent of what we would expect out of a relational database. And this is the data that's coming from HBase. And we can use a lot of our normal uh, SQL operators. So we could say something like where name equals Amy and get that particular uh, record back. Or we could say where, uh, let's say checking is greater than uh, 1000. And see everyone who has a value in their checking account higher than $1,000. So let's now take a look at a slightly bigger table here. Uh, we're going to now link up our Hive table to our U.S. counties table that we've been working with. So we have really the same format here, create external table U.S. counties, and then this is just all of the attributes that are in that table. Uh, it's connecting to our HBase database, and here are our column mappings. And then the uh, table in HBase that we're connecting to is MG US counties. So let me flip back over to HBase and let's link this up. So I am just going to copy and paste this giant statement and uh, oh, that executed quite quickly. I'm going to say show tables. And you see now we have customers and US counties. And we could do something like select asterisk from US counties and we get all of this data back. So one of the things that we have been talking about is that HBase has much higher performance if we know exactly what row we are interested in. However, it has uh, performance that's not so great when we have more complex queries. So I want to take a look now. I have this same exact U.S. counties data set loaded into uh, both HBase and Postgres. And I have five queries here that I want to compare the performance of Postgres as opposed to HBase and Hive. So I'm going to switch over to our Postgres server now at this point. And if we were to do something simple like uh, select asterisk from US counties and we'll run each one of these a couple of times just to make sure that uh, we don't have any weird outliers because sometimes the first time you run a query it takes uh, slightly longer. If we do select asterisk from counties we can uh, see here that this query returned in 0.7 seconds. We'll do this a few more times. 0.7 again, 0 0.65, 0 0.65. Okay, so it looks like Postgres is taking about seven tenths of a second to just return all of the data out of this U.S. counties table. So let's move over to the HBase server, and I am actually just going to copy and paste this directly because our uh, HQL and SQL syntax is the same for, uh, for these queries. If I just do select asterisk from US counties, let's run this, spins by a little bit, uh, 0.31 seconds is the time for that. Run it another time or two, 0.289, 0.245. So yes, yeah, somewhere around uh, a quarter second to a third of a second for HBase to execute this, which is a pretty similar time. HBase is going about twice as fast, I guess, as uh, Postgres is at this point, but that's kind of to be expected. So let's flip over and look at this uh, second query. We want to select asterisk from U.S. counties where state equals Texas. Okay, I'll Postgres actually quite a bit faster this time, uh, about 0.25 seconds we see here, just because it's bringing back less data. Well, very consistently clocking in at a quarter second. I'm going to copy this over to HBase and run the same query, select asterisk from U.S. counties where state equals Texas, and 0 0.3, 0 0.399, 0 
0.259. So pretty similar performance here, about a, a quarter to a third of a second from HBase. And now one thing I will point out about these HBase queries is this is something we could natively write in the HBase shell using the scan and git commands. Okay, so we're not really doing anything that is out of HBase's uh, core functionality at this point. Okay, but let's switch over and do a slightly more complex query in Postgres. Uh, in this case, we're going to select the state and the count of tuples, and we're just going to call that numc for number of counties, uh, grouped by the state. Okay, so this is going to give us a list of states and how many counties is in each state, then ordered such that the state with the highest number of counties is first, and then descending order down to the state with the fewest counties. So I'm going to highlight this, run this in Postgres, and Wow, really fast, 0.13 seconds. So uh, just over a tenth of a second. You can see Texas has the uh, highest number of counties with 254, followed by Georgia, and then all the way down to uh, Washington, D.C. with just one county. So I'll run this a few times and yeah, pretty consistently just over a tenth of a second. All right, so let's flip over to HBase. Copy that, paste, and when we run this, oh wow, we see something really weird start to happen. What Hive has done here now, because this is outside of HBase's core functionality, is Hive has had to create a MapReduce job. And now all of the nodes in our Hadoop cluster have been assigned to tackle part of this problem of combing through the data and counting how many counties are in each state. So the map part of the MapReduce job is splitting up this problem and assigning it to different servers. And then as each server completes counting how many counties are in its subsection of data, the reduce part of the MapReduce job aggregates that back together and then presents it back to the client. Okay, so you can see that took uh, about 10 seconds for the MapReduce job to be created, executed, and return the results. Try it one more time and see what happens. And again, remember Postgres, it took uh, about 0.13 seconds. Yeah, just under 10 seconds here. We'll do it once more. Oh, about seven seconds, so it's speeding up a little bit, but this is a much more complex problem for HBase than it is for Postgres. Now, let's try another one. Imagine we wanted to just calculate the average income of each state, right? So we can say select state, average income, group by state, and then we're going to order by the average income in descending order. Highlight this, execute. Again, super fast, 0.13 seconds. I'll try it again. Uh, it's going pretty fast. So I'm going to copy this over to HBase and we'll see how HBase performs with this. So I paste and execute. And again, HBase has had to create this MapReduce job and is having all the nodes in the Hadoop cluster uh, process on this and then give the results back just under 10 seconds. We'll run it one more time to make sure that wasn't a fluke. Oh, wow, quite a bit faster that time, about uh, three and a third seconds, but still much slower than the uh, tenth of a second that Postgres was able to answer this question in. So just depending on what's going on in the cluster, we might get slightly faster or slightly slower performance, but it's always considerably slower than our relational database. And even for a question that is not all that complicated, right? Not something using aggregate functions, but just if we wanted to specify a different order to return the tuples in. 
And recall we've talked about in a relational database, all of our tuples are stored in an arbitrary order. So returning the tuples in any different order, we don't incur any kind of performance penalty for that. So this is a uh, 0.64 seconds, which was really the same as when we just returned all of the tuples without any kind of uh, ordering. So just a little over half a second to order by county. But if we do the same thing in HBase, HBase has stored all of our counties based on the order of the row key. So returning the rows in the order of the row key is relatively fast. However, if we specify any other order that we want the rows returned in, this is again going to require a MapReduce job and is going to be quite slow. So this is really just a function of the underlying architecture of these database management systems. Postgres and other relational databases have a schema and they treat all attributes and all tuples pretty much equally. That allows them to answer pretty much any question that we want to ask. Um, HBase, on the other hand, does not have a strong schema and thus it can't easily answer what seems to be a pretty straightforward question like what's the average income of each state? Because HBase doesn't even know that every state is going to have an attribute called income. Right? So it's a much more complex question for HBase. So in order to answer these types of seemingly simple questions in HBase, all the data has to be pulled out, a MapReduce job created, and then that MapReduce job is solved by all of the, the nodes in our cluster, and then the results aggregated together and presented back to the client. So it's really a lot more happening uh, than in a relational database management system. And this really goes back to the adage that we talked about in one of the earlier videos that for a relational database, you know what your data looks like, but you don't know what question you want to answer with it, right? We have to define a schema up front, but once we have this schema defined, we can make up any question we want to answer and ask the database to, to return that uh, result. For a non-relational database, on the other hand, we don't know what our data is going to look like ahead of time. And in fact, we can define new attributes on the fly as we write the data into HBase and many of our other non-relational database management systems. But we do know the question we want to answer. And in HBase's case, that question is, hey, can you tell me everything you have about this one specific row? And when we ask that question that HBase is prepared to answer, HBase is just extremely fast, right? Faster than a relational database management system and, uh, and can scale out to be literally hundreds of times larger than a relational database management system without experiencing any performance penalties, right? We have a limit to how large we can scale a relational system and the larger we scale it, the more our performance uh, is going to be impeded by just the overhead of having this large cluster. So as the book says, HBase is not for small jobs. HBase is for big, big, big data. One closing thought here is that when we started using Hive, we were applying structure to non-structured data, right? And that's really not what HBase is intended to do, but Hive is a much uh, more user-friendly way of being able to interact with our data in HBase. So it's a nice tool to have in your tool belt. So that completes our videos on HBase. I hope you enjoyed them and with this knowledge, go forth and do great things.